We welcome in Antonio Pierce and Coach. Congratulations on that victory. This place is about history. How does it feel to be the man who was there for 63 points leading this team? It was good, especially off you know on a short week, disappointing week, and just the way the guys responded. I mean, it started on Tuesday. I said that. I think in my press conference after the game, the way these guys approached the meetings, the way they approached the walkthroughs, and just their day, I mean, you would have thought we won the game. Right. I mean, it was, it was shocking to see. But then when we went out there and played, and I saw the first two drives all they see on both sides of the ball. And I said, okay, we're about to roll. We're about to roll. And I had said that earlier in the week. I said, at some point, offensively, we're going to explode. It's going to happen for us. It's yeah. all going to click. Yeah. And now, do you, yeah, you, the, the thing we're fighting now is consistency, though. Mm-hmm. We want to do that each and every week, each right. and every play. But it was good to see the guys, man, first of all, have fun together, doing it together, celebrating together, and just enjoying something that was – that for at least whatever amount of years we're a part of history. We own that record. Yeah, I said that on the post game afterwards when you were driving home just to know with Coach Flores, Coach Madden, all the other coaches here that you led a team to the all-time franchise record. I mean, a defensive guy? A defensive guy to oh, do that. Who? Where'd that come from? Right, where'd that come from? Uh, I want to get into the first play of the game yeah. with Big Mike and the hit on Mac, and then you take the deep shot, even though it isn't caught. I love that. The first five plays of the game was a statement. Yeah, I mean, you hand it off to your second year back. Mm-hmm. Your rookie tight end gets after an all-pro, probably a Hall of Fame, defensive yeah. end. And then next play, you say, you know what? Let's show you what these Raiders are about now, what we're going to be about today. What, I, what you saw there was just a youth and the maturity of our team as we're growing. Most of the time, and I've, and I've said this before, rookies hit that wall in November, December. Right. Our guys, our young guys are just now starting to climb the ladder, and we're getting better each and every week, and that's making our team better. You can see it. You can mm-hmm. see it with our energy, right. with our speed, and just the way we're playing. It's, it's the youth that's really bringing along a guy like John Jenkins yes. down the field. 9 of 16 on third down. My takeaway was you're throwing it in the end zone, not short of the end zone, and you're throwing it to the marker on third down instead of underneath. Is that something – was that a message that you sent to the offensive staff, let's attack first down? Yeah, I mean, from day one, I, I think hopefully everybody's seen I've been aggressive. Yeah. Fourth downs, try to be aggressive how we've played defense. And, again, pushing our offense along and just getting them going with the rookie quarterback. Mm-hmm. And Aiden, it's going to be okay. Right. It's okay. It's going to be okay. Don't, don't worry about being perfect. Let's just let's try to execute what we're trying to get done today. And I think you saw it for four quarters on Thursday night. And it was good to see the guys really believing it. Even when it wasn't completed pass, don't give up on it. Do it again. Do it again. Do it again until we finally hit and we hit on them. The Jack Jones interception was one for the ages because it's Lester Hayes, it's Mike Haynes, it's Charles Woodson. We talk about history in this room. I don't care who you are coming after these guys. That play is going to go down in NFL history and Raider history. Walk me through the walkthrough in practice and what you saw. Well, it's going to go back, I mean, just to the first game. It's something that had shown up mm-hmm. consistently with them in situations, four by one, running back at number one, motion in, a little short motion, no brainer. Had no other play off of it. Now, we were waiting for it. And I think if you heard our mic up deal yeah, behind the I shield, you, know, you heard Jason Simmons say, be ready for the screen right. and go. Well, they didn't do it all game, and obviously the game was getting out of hand. And Jack, through film study and then just instincts, he took off. And I, when I seen him go, I said, okay, hold on. <laughs> and then when I see him almost like, it looked like he passed up the ball. And then he reached back and had a little MJ-type it was moment MJ. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and grabbed it with one hand. Wow. And not even that. It was the defense who broke the record for 63. Yes. Great point. It was the defense yeah, that broke the record. Point. So when you see, saw the offense in the first half, Bam, 42 points. Great job. Special teams contributing with a forced fumble with mm-hmm. D.J. Turner. And then the last two touchdowns coming from a 350-pound man, 34 years yeah. old, and this little you know, springy guy, Jack Jones, to, to put a bow on it. One thing I picked up from Coach Graham's press conference this week was the practice of Malcolm Kuntz. I want to jump in on that. How important are these walkthroughs and practices for you to look at the tape and say there's one guy or this many guys stepping up, I'm going to give them more playing time, or I'm going to reward them from what I see in practice? goes back to week one, uh, when, well, excuse me, my first week here as the head coach, rewarding practice squad players. Yeah. Well, also, what are you going to do to reward your guys in practice that are busting their tails on the active roster to more playing time, more opportunities? For Malcolm Coons, third down. More importantly, let him rush. He has a unique ability to get off the rock, to bend, and at the end, and the top of his rush, to finish. That acceleration that you're seeing, and so explosive. Mm-hmm. Those fumbles, those two sacks, they, the ball's coming out because he's so explosive. There's a purpose from A to B when he's getting to the top of his rush. 
And you're seeing that with a lot of our guys. And Malcolm Coons, listen, it, it's been it's been a roller coaster ride yeah. since I've been yeah. here with him. And it's kind of like, okay, where is he? Where does he fit in? What are we doing with him? Well, over the last few weeks, we found that role, and he's really stepped up. Okay. And there's been times, you know, he's nicked up, like, and he's fought through it. He's coming hobbling off the field. He goes right back in. But he's such a springboard, and he's been really good also on special teams if you watched him mm-hmm. rush the punter and do other things like that. So you know where all the attention on our defense goes. To our left side, to 98. Right. And I told the guys, at some point, when somebody else steps up, we'll be really good on defense, and that's what's happening. One more thing on the game before we get to Kansas City. For Coach Coughlin and Coach Lewis and that whole preparation, how important was that for you and just to let other mentors come in. We talk about mentors in that game mm-hmm. and what happened over, I don't know how long it's been, 10 days, 7 days, right. bringing that in. What was the concept of that? Well, one, I think for me, just to have men who have been there and done it yeah. for over 40, 50 years at the highest level. Uh, a guy like Tom Coughlin building a franchise from mm-hmm. ground up in Jacksonville, from Marvin Lewis going to, from Super Bowl champions, the best yeah. defense of all time with the Ravens, coaching me, then to the, Cincinnati Bengals and bringing that franchise sure. up again to playoffs and being consistent. Those are guys who, you know, for everything I think I know, they know 10 times. Yeah. And it was just good, I think, not just for me, but our staff to pick their brain, to ask questions, to kind of just see things from a top down, open eye, open ear vision, and seeing things and say, okay, look, this is what I think you're doing well. This is things are not, you're not doing well. Well, how about you look at this? Mm-hmm. Just open up our minds. And at the end of the day, if you can do that and reset as a coach, and to me as an organization in our, on our second floor with our staff, that, 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 that makes us better. Yeah. I don't know how that hinders you. What, what's the issue there? Like, if, right. I could, if you can bring me Vince Lombardi right now, John Madden, bring him in here. Right. Coach me up. Everybody's coachable. Coach me up. Coach me up, Coach. Love that. Uh, on to Kansas City. You mentioned the gadget plays, the extra time. You know there's more gadget plays than you can even look at. So now with the eyes of your team, the eyes to keep an eye on Mahomes, but stay in their lanes and do their job, stay with Kelsey, stay with Rice, because it seems like Kuntz and Max can get to Mahomes, and you don't have to send an extra guy. Does that help to try to slow these gadget plays down? Yeah, I'm not going to go back to my past, but when you can rush four. Right. <laughs> and drop seven, yeah. you're much better. Absolutely. And and Tyree Wilson's in that mix too now. Mm-hmm. You know, we moved him along up and down yeah. off, his, off the defensive line, left, right, inside. The things we're able to do with him now has been really good. Robinson as well, number 97, mm-hmm. another guy who's coming along. So the more speed we can get on the field to mm-hmm. rush Patrick is going to be critical for us in this game, allow us to do different things in the back end. And then you just got to change it up. And, and Patrick and those guys in the lab now drawing up different ways to – hopefully fool Patrick into some plays that we can make. Wrapping this up, if you look at the 17 nothing lead last year, 14 nothing this year, you look at the physicality, nothing really changed, right? You were as physical as you were in the start of the game at the end of the game. So what's the philosophy on finishing? Because you've made adjustments at halftime and they've worked this year. Yeah, I'm, I, that's, that's been a rallying cry yeah. right now this week. Mm-hmm. Listen, man, 17 nothing. wow, okay. 14 nothing at home, wow. Well, what's the difference? Well, this is one of the better teams at the end of the second quarter in that two-minute drive of finishing drives, the Chiefs. Right. Well, that takes a team, not just a defense, a team, special teams, offense, of how we control the game at the end of the second quarter. Third quarter, one of the best teams defensively, the Chiefs are, of not giving up points. Well, offense, we got to start fast. We've done that two games in a row. Even though in Minnesota we didn't score, the ball's at the 11-yard line yeah, before the bad. turnover, right? Defensively, how do we come out? And more importantly, like I told our guys, when we have a team down, we have to finish. We have to choke them out. It has to be an, an intent right. that they don't breathe anymore. We don't give them no more breathing room. The UFC fight. They're done. You put them down when you have them down. It's no different than last week in the charge when people asked, when I was asked the question at halftime. In my mind, I literally blacked out because I told the players and I told wow. myself it was 0-0. So when I said that, in my mind, it was 0-0. But you knew the franchise record was there. Potentially, right? <laughs> it was in my back pocket. That was in your back pocket. It was in my back pocket. That. Right. Uh, last one, your message to the fans. It's Christmas. You've played on Christmas, Christmas Eve. You're coaching now. These fans are right there for you on a holiday. Listen, we're, we're traveling on Christmas Eve. We'll spend a little bit more time with our families Good. before we get out here Sunday. We'll go play a game on Christmas Day. And like I told our guys, the best gift we can give ourselves, our fan base, Raider Nation, and our alumni is a win. Happy holidays, Coach. Thank you.